Hello, ladies and gentlemen. With the announcement of Power Surge for Rust console coming in in February 23, I decided to make a little series called Rust Electricity or Rust Console Electricity for Dummies. I don't know what the title is, but to the basics of it, I'm going to be teaching you guys very simple electricity, things like trap bases and stuff like that to kind of get you guys through the things. Now, right here in front of us, we have the three batteries that are introduced to us on the Rust Console Edition. We're going to have the large battery, the medium battery, and the small battery. Now, I'm going to be teaching you the very basis of it. The small battery, as you can see, has a capacity of 150 stored charge. So, basically, you could store up to 150 electricity in here. And it has a maximum output of 10. We're going to get to that in a second. Now, the medium battery has 9,000 and a max output of 50 and the large battery is going to have a maximum storage of 24,000 and a max output of 100. Now you might be wondering, what does that mean? W what does it mean that, you know, what is that, this max output and stuff like that? Well, we teach it to you very simple. So, for example, if we go ahead and we plug this battery into this charge right here to power this very simple turret, if we turn it on, you see that the battery is not powering the turret. Now, you might be wondering, well, what's going on? It's because this has a max usage of 10. And you know what that means? This turret has a usage of 10. So you know what that means? That means that we would have to come over here and use our medium battery in order for us to plug this in here. And then we turn it on. And then look, now the turret turns on. Why is that? Because now we are using, what, there you go, now we turned it on, <laughs> oh my god, we're using 11 charge right now, whoops, that was a hiccup, we're using 11 active, and as you can see, we have up to 50, out of those 50, we're using 11, obviously, the actual, this battery, the regular small battery, only has a maximum of 10. That means we wouldn't be able to put a switch to turn this on. Turret uses 10, while the switch is going to use 1. It's very simple for you to see what does each thing use. If you hover over and you click on the actual switch, it tells you, for example, this one's going to use 1, this one's going to use 1. With the exception of few things, most things use 1 usage of power. Things like the heater uses up to three, you know, and that's pretty much other than that. I don't really know much. There probably is a couple of them. So now that you know what does this, why it doesn't matter for you to have a maximum output. Obviously, you know that now your choices are limited with a small battery. So maybe going with the medium battery might be a best option. And then for your bigger class, you're going to have the large battery that has a usage of 100. 100 means you're probably going to be able to squeeze nine turrets and I will be having a video coming up on how to power nine turrets with a large battery the easy way to do it but I digress so let's kind of go back so now that we have our basics which is the batteries well now it comes down well, how can I power these things if I could store up to 9,000 battery you know and I only have 395 charge obviously I want to maintain this because if I don't maintain this if I have something as this powering right now, it tells me right up top that I only have 35 minutes left on this battery and then it's going to die. And then, you know, we're going to turn off our turret. Now we don't have the fence on the base and we are in trouble. So how can we go ahead and power these things? Well, it's very easy. You're going to have options like so, like the solar panels. And then the next here would be things like your windmill. Now, if you want to know how much each of these things are producing it is very easy if you hover over you know the solar panel you're gonna have it could store or it could produce or as I say power generated up to 20 per solar panel while the windmill could store up to or generate a hundred and fifty power and the windmill actually with the exception of using one electricity or I should say a storage of one so obviously if you connect the windmill it's going to have, you know, right here it says an output or a max output of 100. Now you're going to have a max output of 99 because obviously the windmill is going to use one out of that 100. Now, with that said, we're going to go ahead over here and come over to the solar panel. It says, it might say 20 right here, but it doesn't always mean 20. You know what that is? Because the sun is not always shining. 
in a specific thing so right here it says i have 20 because obviously the sun is shining directly on my solar panel but on the other side of this solar panel it says i'm generating six right why is that because the sun is not fully over it so this is why you want to place your solar panels facing northeast and southwest that way you get the maximum amount of sun on both sides during the entire day cycle i believe rust night cycle is six minutes so take that into account so for six minutes your battery is not going to be being charged so obviously if we have two solar panels, if we could charge up to 20 at a time we have 40 and then we have another 40 so what is that 80 charge going into our actual thing at a certain time of the day where like the sun is shining right over both of these panels so we got 20 from this 20 from this so that's 40 for a couple of minutes now coming up to our windmill our windmill right now it's only giving us 47 now with the windmill it's a different story the higher the windmill is the bigger the charge you're gonna get for this windmill i believe i only placed it one two three four four high and right now i'm only getting 47 now this also has to do with wind blowing as you can see the windmill is always going to shift right now it's looking this way sometimes it'll shift to facing that way it really depends on the wind and how you're doing you know usually i see clans running like two or three of these things these things are a little bit clunky um i haven't really tested out too much of these things because i've never really gotten to test them out to that extreme I would usually stick with my solar panels, to be honest with you. Now, if you're wondering, well, should I be worried about people breaking my solar panels and everything? I'm going to show you right now. A solar panel is considered almost a metal structure. You see? Me shooting it with the AK, look how long it's taken for me to break it. Honestly, if, there was, if this was a game, <laughs> if this was actually a, a regular game right now, somebody will hear me shooting and they're going to come over and, you know, kill me for shooting and using an AK to shoot this so don't worry too much about getting grief when it comes to this type of things because I don't not a lot of people are gonna grief you on your things and as well as these the windmills the windmills even if you shoot it with an Akas for a while it's not gonna go down that easy I could shoot it for a while and it's it's gonna take a while for me to like even you know because you're only gonna see this on like clans as you can see this thing has taken little to no damage at all now obviously if i shoot it with a rocket that's going to be a whole different story you know that's going to bring it down by like what half almost yeah one more rocket this thing is down but you know this is something this is why you place it high up if you place it high up obviously it's gonna you know you got to think about somebody from down here trying to aim at that it's going to be very rare for people to even use explosives for these type of things so don't worry too much about getting grief on that type of things worry more about how much storage you're getting out of that and how much can you store so now we got 31 minutes on this so let's go ahead and plug this up to our actual you know solar panels over here boom so now if you're wondering what are these things i'm going to explain that in future videos but basically what i did is that i use our ruth combiner to connect one two solar panels into one thing and two solar panels into one thing and then those two i plug them straight into one and then that one is going to be being fed to our battery as you can see now our battery is charging it's no longer set at 30 minutes now you see the timer is going up now it's 32 minutes and so on and so on you get what i'm saying so this has kind of been a basic format on how you know you're going to charge your batteries what each battery is and what does that mean when it comes to battery storage as well as battery output and battery usage i hope this was very helpful to you guys i will be making this a series so make sure to check out future videos and i hope you guys are excited as i am for the power surge coming into the rust console but with that said this has been your host biolaser and until next time guys